All right, welcome back. So yeah, picked up this bike. The guy was quite surprised because it was up for six months or something, and I hit him up to see if it's still there, and he said, yeah. Um, yeah, no one wanted to touch it, but we'll see how we go with this one. It's a Merida Albon Tech, which has uh, steel lugs and aluminum tubing. Here's the original catalog. Um, you can see the bikes for sporting. All right, so from the top, we got these STX, I think, RC levers with the low adjustment, kind of like Dior LX. Same with the shifters, I'm pretty sure they're STX RC or STX. And then same on the other side, matching, so that's pretty good. And yeah, the shifters both work pretty well. We've got these grips, old style grips, um, they're actually pretty hard. And then these funky handlebars look a little bit bent as well, so I'll switch those out. Got this little stem. And then the VP components headset with the cool graphics, old school graphics, A headset. Um, we've got the serial number here if anyone wants to know. And then got these uh, Pro Max brakes. Not sure, I haven't really seen those around much. But yeah, this is one of the main reasons why I picked up this bike for these uh, part pre forks. I think they're super sick, straight blade. You don't really see those much with the canty bolts, or well, they're hard to get. Um, but yeah, made of chromo, pretty sick I think. Got these uh, array of rims and STX hubs. Yeah, the rims are actually pretty worn down I think. And I don't know if I'm going to replace them or run them. But yeah, we'll see how we go with those. Tires we got Maxxis Swamp Things, uh, 26 by 2.1. Um, they look a little bit thinner. I think they look like 2.0s, but the logo is pretty cool with the little monster coming out. That's pretty rad. 35, 65 psi, and then the knobs you can see it's pretty aggressive. Probably like a mud, a mud type of tire, I think. Bottle cage. Um, just <laughs> generic puddle cage, but looks pretty good condition. And then got the front mech. I think this is STX without the sticker again. Altus cranks, which are pinned, which are not really my favorite. Any type of pin cranks are no good, but it looks like there were bolts in there or fake bolts. I don't know. Um, these pedals look brand new. Just generic pedals. STX rear mech and seems pretty straight. We got the cassette, seven speed cassette in pretty good condition as well and the STX rear hub as well. And you can see, yeah, the rims on the back are pretty worn too. Just got these Dicom VC757 brakes. Pretty cool, I've cleaned these up before. Um, but yeah, not matching to the front ones. Rear triangle's pretty rusty. Seat post clamp pretty rusty, seat post pretty scratched, <laughs> and then got this turbo light, uh, pretty cool saddle, but I like the original uh, turbo better, but yeah, this is uh, still pretty cool, and not too many holes in it, so I should be able to fix that up. Yeah, you can see the paint's pretty rough, a um, little scratched up on the top tube, but the good thing about those aluminum tubes is there's no rust. But yeah, the cables are not rusted, which is a good sign as well. Um, but yeah, see if I need to replace those or not. So yeah, here on the rear triangle, just some rust and just some damage. So I'm trying to fix that up best I can. But yeah, overall, pretty cool bike. It's actually a lot lighter than I thought when I first picked it up. I was quite surprised. And um, yeah, cool little Merida badge with the cool logo. But yeah, we'll see what we can do with this. All right, taking off the pedals. I always forget to do this, but it's easy to take off pedals when uh, everything's still on the bike because you can, yeah, you got that leverage. Just make sure you turn it the right way. And then here, same thing on the other one, turn it the other way to get it off. Reverse thread. Taking off the chain here, so yeah, put it in the smallest cog on the cassette. And then on the front chain ring, you can either go smallest or biggest. I just did biggest here, but basically what you want to do is just take off the tension of the chain, and that will help you take it off without it flinging out. 
sometimes I take the chain off the front chain ring first before I take the chain off and then yeah just snipping all these cables just snipping all the little caps off taking the rear mech off with the new uh, I'm gonna use, be using the new wearer allen key tools for this build um, yeah see how they go I did a little unboxing thing if you guys want to check it out but yeah you can see there's grease on the little chain ring bolt which is a good good sign as well and then yeah taking the cranks off basically wind this tool all the way in wind it a half turn to make sure your crank removal tool is fully seated and then you can uh, yeah crank down the other bit make sure it's fully unwound before you put it in of course and yeah these cranks came off pretty easily uh, usually if the cranks come off everything else should come off all right hopefully here cutting the cables again just undoing them all you can see the damage underneath here it's just the paint though the tubing's fine but uh, I guess the paint was chipping away cool little chain stop hanger thing if your chain comes off we'll hang on that and then size uh, 46 frame C tube Yeah, once you get all the cables and the chain off, you can start taking off the bike parts pretty easy off the frame. Here, taking the other crank off. Yeah, usually if you take off one side, the other side should be uh, should be good because whoever installed it should have done it the same way. And yeah, same technique here. Just a little turn to make sure it's fully seated, and then it should pop off. Sometimes I also spray WD-40 on the square taper um, in between the crank arm and the crank if it's really hard and just leave it for a while. But uh, this one was fine. And then here just taking off the brakes. The brakes are no problem as well. And then taking off the bottle cage. I love flipping the bike around on my balcony just because I'm limited for space. Um, but yeah, cut all the cables off. Make sure you wind them up if you don't want cables flying everywhere. And then here, using uh, a little uh, seal pick tool that I got from Boot Bike um, to kind of just ease the cable out. And then using the cable out here as well for the front brake. You just got that little latch for the STX or LX shifter that model. And getting off the grips using a little bit of WD40 and a spoke. Basically, I just push the spoke, or you can use a zip tie, push it in one end, and then it'll create a little area for the WD-40 to get in. And then um, you can kind of just like twist it out. That makes it makes it pretty easy. All right, I get to test out this little tool. It's um, Pedro's BB socket holder, so it should help me get the BB off. And basically, I'm doing a square taper. And I just have to basically just follow the instructions right here. Seems like they use this end, and then the washer goes on the end here. I take this off, and then you screw it into the bottom bracket, and that should be it. So let's test it out. So yeah, basically what you do is you just take off this nut and then put on your BV tool. Make sure it's fully seated in there. And then you just put the washer down and then screw it in. Uh, what you want to do is screw it in until the spring has tension, pretty good tension. Yeah, you can see the tension there, the spring is squashed. And then now you just take it off like normal. So yeah, this ended up being like super easy. I think this bottom bracket, to be honest, was pretty easy to get out. I'd like to try it again with um, like a more stuck bottom bracket. But yeah, no problems here on this one. It's good to kind of have your hands free as well, not worrying about your tool kind of like twisting off the bottom bracket when you when you take it off. I've definitely done that on bottom brackets which are real tough. You try to unwind it and then the bottom bracket tool slips. 
Um, but yeah, this worked pretty well. So yeah, bottom bracket came off pretty easy. Um, you can see there's some rust on the inside and it had kind of two caps and a little bit of dirt. So we're gonna clean those up. Uh, but yeah, you can see it's been uh, well greased, which is a good thing. Here, just taking off the bottle bolts and then taking off the stem as well. Um, no, no brainer here, pretty easy. Just spray WD-40 if they get stuck. Usually these should come off pretty well. And then um, if you don't want to take the whole cap off, you can do <laughs> you can do this to take the bar off. Just twist it out. Taking off the seat post came out pretty easy. It's 28.8, .8, which I've never seen before. Seems like a real random random size, but I think yeah, all these all these old bikes they uh, they always have weird size seat post diameters. So I'll definitely be running the same seat post. Uh, here I couldn't get the quick release of the the back wheel off, so I needed to use a shifter just to get more leverage for it to come off. Um, yeah, this is strange too. I've never had this happen. I guess someone must have really muscled it on. And yeah, that was it. Taking off the wheels, taking off the the top cap here, and the stem. All of it came off pretty easy. Uh, there was a really interesting thing about how this cap was put on. There was a little spacer in here, this silver spacer. It was strange because this had kind of an edge on it as well, so the cap wouldn't sit properly when I put it on. It would kind of like shake around and be uneven. So what I think is that actually that silver retaining retaining ring actually goes on top. And then here just give it a tap if you can't get it out. Um, the old <laughs> shifter hammer technique and yeah that came loosened it pretty easy but yeah this silver retaining ring actually goes on top I'm pretty sure unless it was replaced and then a different part goes on top but it works a lot better on top than uh, than how it was the other way so I think someone must have got mixed up there but yeah here's the frame all done all taken off relatively pretty easy nothing stuck no seat, seat post or anything like that so pretty stoked on this. So the only thing I found that kind of caught my attention was this on the on the frame. Um, I didn't know if it was the crack or just the join, but it seems like wherever all the steel lugs meet, it has the same same type of deal. So I'm thinking it's just maybe the it's kind of loosened a little bit over time. It's been probably like 30 years or something. All the paints come off a little bit so maybe there's a little bit of movement and the, the paint has cracked um, so yeah I kind of did a poll on my Instagram to make to ask people whether if they knew what it was some people with some other frames said they had exactly the same thing um, so I'm gonna give this a check to see if I can run it or not but everything everyone says is okay so we should I think we should be okay but yeah everything's off the bike now and the frame is looking pretty rough, so I need to give it a give it a clean as well. Sometimes if there's a crack, you can shine it through and you can see light coming through. Um, here there's no light at all, so that was kind of the first the first check that made me feel a little bit safer. And here's with the brighter light again. Yeah, nothing really coming through at all. And the next day I looked inside the frame and you can see how much overlap there is so you can see that metal pipe coming through probably overlaps about 10 centimeters you can see on the head tube it has a little slightly different construction so I can't see how much it overlaps but yeah I'm assuming there has to be some type of overlap so I feel I feel pretty good about it so yeah what we're going to do is clean this up and then yeah see how we go with it. you can see the paint's pretty cool actually sparkly paint and the forks have Kind of a really cool paint as well. Pretty nice forks, I think. Nice straight blades. And then, yeah, you can, here's a logo Park Pre Forks Factory Racing. All right, so yeah, cleaning up the frame. So basically, what I do is I just uh, can either brush it down with a nylon brush or use a little bit of uh, soap and detergent, uh, water and detergent, I mean, 
and then just spray it down and wipe down the whole frame. For any tougher areas, what I like to use is a little bit of WD-40 and a wire brush, and sometimes that helps uh, get rid of some of the rust. But yeah, you can see this rear this re was pretty uh, pretty rusty, getting some of the gunk off where the, the chain stay protector was on as well. So yeah, sometimes I use sandpaper as well if it's real tough, just 600 wet and dry. And that, that really helps it. Um, just be careful of the paint, of course, depends what you you know what your goal is at the end so yeah I end up doing this for the whole frame and wiping it down I cut some of the footage out because it got pretty repetitive but here uh, I'm going to try to use T-cut again to try to clean up some of the the marks but yeah basically it's uh, kind of like a, a compound that has a abrasive unit it's very fine and you can uh, kind of brush off kind of like the top coat but yeah, it looks pretty good once you do it. And again, I <laughs> just end up doing this on the whole frame to see if it would uh, freshen up. Yeah, T-Cut is a color restorer for cars, but yeah, it works on bike frames as well and it helps, uh, stops oxidization and kind of removes light scratches as well. But yeah, you can probably use any type of polish. I think people use turtle wax polish as well. Um, yet to try it, but I heard it works well. But yeah, here's the frame all done up. Uh, looking good however I wasn't happy with it so uh, yeah I decided I'm gonna strip it but I was just gonna strip the rear triangle just to begin with to see uh, how hard it would be to see how well the paint stripper worked with the, the frame uh, basically I'm just using this Degas paint stripper and what you do is you just kind of lather it on pile it on and then you wait maybe around I think 30 minutes to an hour and it should react. Um, sometimes you have to wait longer if it doesn't react depending on how thick the paint is but you can see what you want is those bubbles coming up. So yeah I've done a, a stem before and bars before on the MK, uh, MBK build I think uh, and that was a little bit easier so yeah it really depends on the paint and it's not, I wouldn't say it's an easy thing where the paint just kind of comes off. It actually takes a bit of effort and it is pretty messy. So if you're thinking about trying it, um, just just beware. But yeah, at this point, I was kind of like already committed to the rear triangle. I was like, hey, let me just try the rear triangle to see how it looks. And if it's worth it, I'll do, I'll do the whole thing. But yeah, honestly, it's no joke. I think it took... I think this was over two days and it was just a re, re triangle. Granted, I wasn't working on it for those hours, but yeah, you can see kind of what it looks like. And it's still not super clean. But yeah, I ended up posting um, some photos on Instagram and my community page on YouTube and for people to have a vote. And everyone said <laughs> just run it as is. So yeah, I think uh, I'm just going to run it just how it looks. I gotta say it does look pretty sick like once it's been stripped but yeah it definitely takes a lot of effort so I might um, if I don't like the look of it at the end of the day I might strip the whole thing and here just using those seal pick tools again to get all the little crud bits out and then some light sanding again just to help it out yeah after all that I just wiped it down and basically done so yeah <laughs> Yeah, it does look sick, I think, but it definitely took a lot of work. And yeah, I'm still not done because I gotta clear coat it. So yeah, just using some uh, deluxe clear coat. This isn't the strongest clear coat, that's what I had. It'll give it some type of protection to stop it from rusting again. Uh, yeah, just make sure you wear a respirator and then just do light coats. Yeah, you basically wanna coat it as much as you can without it dripping. Of course, that's hard to kind of gauge, but if you're unsure, just do it on the lighter side. I end up doing uh, just two coats, I think. So yeah, this is kind of what it looks look like when it's finished. Um, I did kind of like a semi-gloss and a matte can, so I did a bit of both. Uh, but yeah, it kind of has this kind of cool looking finish to it. All right, just clean the forks as well. So yeah, just WD-40 and then a wire brush. And you can see sometimes that gets rid of uh, all the rust. You can kind of just wipe it off after you're done. End up doing that on both sides. Um, you can see there's some rust on the side here, but 
I don't know, it felt like really embedded in and didn't really come off. So I think I'll rust protect that or rust convert it. Um, and in the bottom, the bottom of the forks here, you can see pretty rusted. So what I'm going to do is just chuck them into vapor rust and see if that helps. Yeah, vapor rust just helps get rid of rust and it's pretty friendly, nature friendly. So yeah, check it out. Here you can see the result. I soaked it for 24 hours and it looks pretty good. It looks like it's got rid of all the rust. And what you want to do is just clean it and spray with a little bit of WD-40 to protect it. And then here I'm going to use rust converter on the rest. Uh, so the top of the forks and what you do is you basically just paint it on uh, pretty thick or as thick as you can without it dripping and I think it's some type of some type of acid and it's meant to convert the rust to stop the stop it rusting um, but yeah I ended up doing uh, usually sometimes it changes it black but for me it didn't really change on these forks and I end up doing it twice because it didn't really react the first time, I decided to see if I could scruff it up to see if it changes it anything. So I end up scruffing it up with just a wire brush, cleaning it, and then putting it on again. And yeah, it was just basically the same. <laughs> yeah, and this is basically it. Hopefully it works. So frames are done, chuck some wheels on just to see how it looks. Thing looks pretty sick. So yeah, we'll clean the other parts. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> Go clean up the BB. But yeah, the idea for this bike was to build uh, a sleeper type of bike. A sleeper is basically uh, comes from cars, I think, a pretty average looking car, but then it has kind of good components on the inside. But yeah, the bike, you're, you're kind of the engine, so we'll see how this works out. So yeah, I got XTR brakes and Avid brake levers. Shout out Meagle for the uh, brake levers. They're super sick. And then got these S work cranks. So yeah, I think these parts kind of feel uh, like feel like the sleeper vibe. I think it'll fit well. So yeah, we're gonna take these all apart and clean them up. You can see the chain rings or the chain ring bolts were pretty tight on this, but I got them off. A little WD forty goes a long way as well. Um, I usually use that. You can see on the other side it's pretty kind of dirty or rusted. So I'm going to try to drop all this stuff into vapor rust as well. And yeah, for this specialized crank, s work crank, you can see it's got like a bolt on the underside and it's real hard to hold it tight. So I end up using a very, very small Allen key just to kind of wedge it in there and then that helped me get it off. It actually took a, a little bit for me to work that out, but once you work it out, the bolt came off real easy. Um, and then the chain rings here, you can see pretty, pretty dirty. Um, and what I'm doing now is basically I'm just brushing all the dirt, as much dirt as I can get off because uh, Evapo Rust works better when there's no, when it doesn't have to work through the dirt. So yeah, just taking everything apart and then all the XTR stuff. I'm not going to soak the, the brake pads because I don't want them to squeak or I don't want to re-clean them again. Um, but yeah, you can see everything's apart, all the bolts, just make sure you don't lose any bolts because that's or spaces because that can be a real issue um, but yeah basically just rinse all of it, rinse all of it first give it a brush down with a nylon brush um, sometimes <laughs> you got to run uh, a sink trainer or some things to make sure the bolts don't go through but yeah if you're careful you should be fine and then here just pouring the vapor rust in I just use this clear container and then it just had to fill up with some extra I put that hole strainer in it's kind of like a cooking strainer from Daiso 280 is pretty good I use it all the time and then um, yeah give these a soak for 24 hours and hopefully the rust comes off so yeah I got these moto bars just off uh, eBay I'll put the link in the description and they came with this crossbar but I thought I just took the crossbar off I think they look pretty good they're pretty cheap and I think they look pretty sick as well like pretty nice rise pretty nice sweep not overly crazy for moto bars and you can kind of rotate it depending on on what you want i'd say it has a little bit more up sweep than normal than your normal mountain bike bars but um still pretty pretty close and then they're also pretty light they were just 500 grams with the bar a crossbar so they got to be lighter than that and i got this uh cult stem uh, top load stem that pushes the bar a little bit higher and I thought 
that this stand would look pretty sick with these bars so I ended up using this. Um, also helps not to have a, a threaded headset so you can just kind of switch out the stem. But yeah, super happy with how this looks. I think the rise is pretty good and yeah, it looks pretty good. 800 wide as well. Alright, here's all the stuff soaked for 24 hours on a vapor rust. So I think it worked pretty well. It took most of the rust off. I think I've been using this vapor rust for yeah, almost a year or two now. Um, but yeah, basically what you need to do is just rinse off all the black residue and then I spray it with uh, WD-40 to stop it from flash rusting and Yeah, there's not there's not too much to it after that Sometimes you can see there's a little bit of rust on the chain ring and a little bit of the rust uh, here and there But uh, what I want to do is kind of like buff up some of these components. I think the cranks they look cool, but I, I could buff them up, make them a little bit nicer. It's not going to be a full resto, full finish. Still keep some of the patina, but just even it out. I think that always looks good. Looks good to me anyway. And then um, the what I'm using here is a drill press. Uh, shout out to the homie that got me this, and I'm um, just using the using this kind of like a sponge, sandpaper type of brush on it it's actually like a really light sanding brush and then what it does is it just gets rid of a ton of any like bumps and scratches and it's really nice actually and yeah tip if you have one of these not everyone has a drill press obviously but um you need to do a bunch of spaces at once i just put them on that uh seal pick tool and then it just spins around but you can use like a pencil or whatever um but yeah basically Cleaned up all the parts, buffed up some bolts. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't buff up every bolt, but everything here is super clean. Uh, pretty stoked on that. And you can see the cranks are cleaned, chain rings, brakes. I put all these on the um, little drill press. So yeah, I wasn't completely happy with how the S work cranks were here, and there was a little bit of rust on the inside as well. I think some of the grease got stuck or whatever, but yeah, double D for and brush got rid of that. But yeah, you can see some of the wear on here and I want to kind of just even it out. Because it has like a clear coat on it, so it kind of looks a little bit funny with some of the clear coat coming off and then some of the metal scratches. So I decided just to take the clear coat off and then just even, even, even out the entire crank. And yeah, just using 600 wet and dry, just make sure you sand, try to sand it evenly. And I think it's looking pretty good. They look pretty, pretty shiny. I'm pretty happy with that. And then here, just putting the chain rings on. So yeah, I was kind of unsure where to go with the direction of the bike. I was like, oh, should I make it original, like seven, a three by seven or one by seven or single speed? Um, because I recently sold my single speed and my friction shifter bike So I was kind of thinking maybe I'll just build something a little bit in between So I ended up going for 1x7, you'll see later on Here I'm cleaning up uh, the wheels They spin pretty good, but I didn't I orig originally was going to like relace the wheels with new rims, but I feel like for the condition of the rims and the hubs the hub spun pretty decent but it take a lot of work just to relace the rims and I don't know if the spokes are gonna break or the nipple's gonna break or whatever so I decided what I'm gonna do with this set is kind of just run them until they break and then get a new set of wheels uh, maybe save the hubs or something but um, yeah just clean them and I'm putting on uh, these downhill tires the Tioga downhill tires 2.3s you can see they just fit within the fork, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, and then there's actually a decent amount of room in the chain stay. Um, so yeah, the reason for these thicker tires, I think uh, I want to kind of make it like a kind of clunker style. So fat tires, but having a light bike should kind of even it out a little bit, should make it a pretty fun ride, especially having it a little bit more plush with the rigid fork will help too. And then here just putting, uh, installing the fork, putting grease on, 
Um, I know these are sealed bearings, but I put grease on the turning areas anyway, just to keep any water out and to stop it from rusting. And then yeah, just grease up each part basically. And this is looking pretty good once I put the, the stem on. And yeah, just putting one spacer for now. I'm gonna do this height and see how it goes. If it ends up being too low, I'll switch it up. Um, but when I was putting the bolt in, it was kind of crooked. So I think the star nut was installed a little bit crooked. So I ended up just straightening that out. And then it just makes clamping down everything a little bit easier. Makes it, uh, just makes it right, I guess. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, here just alternative, alternate the bolt as you tighten, especially with this stem. Um, you don't want to strip those threads. And then here installing the uh, XTR brakes, just a little bit of grease on the, on the spindle. And then I put it in the middle notch of the forks, depending on how much tension you want. Um, but yeah, these XTR brakes are pretty adjustable as well with the little screen on, on both brakes on both sides. And yeah, just do these up tight. You don't want your brakes falling off, but yeah, they should be able to spring back like that. And then yeah, the, after I clean all the bolts, putting these bolts back on. And then yeah, same, same with the back. So yeah, I think the back, putting on the back brakes, I really uh, I really like the look of how the XTR brakes looks with the raw frame. So I think, um, yeah, maybe in the future I would strip the forks to be raw, but at the moment, and yeah, it's to save me some time and just to run it as is, to see how it looks, um, I'm gonna keep, keep the forks as is. And then here, clean the brakes. I did use a little bit of WD-40 to clean the sides, but just make sure you don't get WD-40 on the pads itself. Um, and then I end up cleaning the brake pads with the actual with actual brake cleaner. This is car brake cleaner. Um, but yeah, it helps get rid of any oil or residue and stops your brakes from uh, squeaking on the rim. So if you ever have squeaky rims, try to clean your rims with uh, brake cleaner and also your pads with brake cleaner and that should stop it. Here just installing the BB, grease it up, has a little retaining ring or some type of ring that pushes on the BB on both on both caps or both cups sorry and then you can see there's a left and right side, the right side is for the drive side, it will have little arrows on the BB and then here just greasing up the uh, bottom bracket cup and then what I do is I just screw it in by hand first and then I do that both sides and then I'll use the tool to kind of tighten it make sure you grease up the other side as well just the same process hand screw it in I find if you hand screw it usually it stops stops you from cross threading anything because you can kind of feel how the thread goes in and then yeah, once you kind of tighten it in, I just use a shifter to kind of just tighten it up. I'm sure there's a special tool for this, but yeah, shifter works pretty well, gives you good leverage. So yeah, it's nice and snug there, clean up all the grease. Uh, if you leave grease on there, it's basically just gonna attract dirt here just greasing the square tapers again. I know there's a lot of discussion about this, but I think, yeah, my conclusion is a thin layer. Thin layer is the way to go. But yeah, you can, uh, you can do what you want, of course. Here, putting the caps on. Um, so yeah, some people say if you put grease on the tapers, you might tighten it too much, but tighten it till it feels tight and don't try to hulk it, <laughs> hulk it. Otherwise, yeah, it'll go. You'll definitely do uh, bad things. Um, so yeah, after putting all this, I decided to go one by seven. So I ended up.
putting uh, taking the other two rings off I'm just going to try it with this chain ring it's not a narrow wire it's just a normal one so we'll see how that goes and then I add, had to use some smaller chain ring bolts so if you decide to go one by you might need to have some of those as well and then yeah same thing installing the crank on this side But yeah, I think it was looking looking pretty good. I'm pretty pretty happy with it. Um, I still think there's a bit of wear left on this chain ring, so I decided just to run it. It's also really hard to find a 94 BCD chain ring, but they are they are around. And then yeah, just using a wear Allen key. But yeah, you can see the BB spins really smooth. There's no play in it. Uh, yeah, it worked really well. And then the rear Mac, I'm going to use this x age motion, and I got to clean up these skills and stuff as well. But yeah, this x age motion is actually a road derailleur, and yeah, it's pretty tight for some reason. So motion is probably the the lowest range. I think the lo <laughs> the lowest component because it's plastic, um, but. It has a tight spring, so I'm gonna run it to see how it works. Also, short cage, so I think it works well for one by for my uh, for my Ranger cassette. Yeah, I think short cage. You gotta really look up what you can run on a short cage. It really depends on how many chain rings are running up front, and then your rearrange in the back. Uh, but I think this one should go up to 34. Two pretty easy on the back. And then generally you would use like a, a medium or a long cage if your range is bigger, like if you had like a 48 tooth on the back for your cassette. Um, but yeah, I decided to keep this pretty tight. And then yeah, just cleaning the parts again. I put some parts in the vapor rust, some of the skewer, some of the seat post clamp. I'm gonna replace the seat post clamp because I had another one, but you can see I've cleaned up the derailleur looks pretty clean, there's like a lot of dirt on it, there's still a little bit of rust here on the cassette, I'm going to drop that in vapor rust, but um, yeah, this this derail, <laughs> this derail is actually pretty funny, kind of, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of funny to have like a really low range derailleur, but then uh, XTR brakes and S work cranks, so yeah, I'll see if how many people uh, roast me for that, but we'll, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, here you can see, yeah, after pulling it out, it works it works pretty well, like, um, yeah, there's no rust on the, on the cassette, but here sometimes if it's real stubborn, you need a brush in WD-40 just to brush it off. So I end up doing that, rinsing again, and spraying it WD-40, just repeat the same process. Yeah, a lot of cleaning and restorations. Um, Depends if you like it or not. <laughs> I recommend, uh, yeah, if you like it, then you probably like restorations. If you don't, then there might be a lot of work for you. <laughs> but yeah, here's all the um, here's all the skewers and cassette and stuff all ready to go. You put the cassette back on, pretty easy. Put the skewer back in. Make sure the spring is in the right position. You can see one spring on that side facing in small end facing in and the other one other side that's how they go and then you just yeah do it up tight nice tight as before <laughs> but pretty tight and um, yeah you can see spring pretty good yes yeah, so I try to run these wheels and use them till they run out here putting on the rear mech looking pretty good I think I actually quite like the kind of half plastic half metal it looks kind of cool and then the, i think the logo looks cool as well but here i'm just setting the limit on the derailleur you can see i'm trying to align it to the very left hand side and you use the low limit screw for that and then i'm using the high limit to match up with the smallest cog and this basically what this does is it prevents you from pulling too hard on the shifter and having the derailleur go into your wheel and um, vice versa the other way as well um, but yeah usually set this without a chain makes it a bit easier all right putting on the chain uh, this is an eight speed chain between six and seven six and eight it's all the same size and then i just did a little stick test 
So yeah, this chain was pretty sticky, so I decided to give it a clean, otherwise all the dirt and gunk will stick to it. And then just using this smooth lube cleaner, you just need to do that amount, which is two caps in a little bit. And yeah, it makes it real easy. You just give it a shake, brush it off, and then just wash it, and then all that stickiness is off. And then just installing the chain here, I what I do is I do the big cog on the back and the front, or you only have one front one, and then you add uh, four links or two full links. And this one also has a, a little uh, quick link thing, so you got to count for that. But I basically sized it to this size, and I'm going to see if it's too loose or not. And yeah, you can just pull on it to, to connect it. Make sure you thread it through the right way. But yeah, you can see this is working pretty well. It feels maybe slightly loose on the smallest cog, but on the big cog, it seems all right. I think I'm going to run it just like this for now. After a ride, I'll see... Um, I'll see if it's too loose or not. But yeah, some people like uh, that loose loose chain noise. Um, here, uh, putting a smooth lube on here. So this is, uh, I think, wax base, but yeah, you just leave it overnight and it works pretty well, makes, makes for a silent chain. Yeah, you can see this seat post is pretty busted up. Um, a lot of scratches on it. There wasn't too much I could do about this unless I kept sanding it forever. It would have changed, changed the size of my seat tube. I think I did that, but I just gave it a nice, uh, just a once over, um, you know, not perfect, but clean it up a little bit. Scratches are still there, but yeah, you gotta, sometimes you gotta roll with it. And yeah, I think, you know, the bike frames already got like scratches and stuff or whatever. So I think it's not too, uh, it's not too bad. Here's being in the seat post, make sure you grease it up. And then, yeah, put a little bit of grease off the seat post onto the seat post clamp as well. I had this old seat post clamp from another bike that I got way back that I didn't use. And I think the black matches the, the stem and the headset. So decided to use this. I think it looked a little nicer than the, than the other silver one and I think it matches the bike a little bit more. So yeah, here I'm just gonna add some knurling to where the clamp is. I didn't do this with uh, previous bars and didn't have a problem, but I thought, why not, while well, I got the bike apart and this is just a little drill bit that's kind of like rubber, I think, but it does leave little scratches when you grind metal. So I ended up just doing it in like a cross hash, hatch uh, direction and then this is what it looks like, just to give it a little bit more grip. Um, yeah, again, I didn't do it with my diamond back. I didn't have any problems, but if you're looking for more grip, that's what you can do. And then here, just bring on the bars. You can see it has a little bit of flex on the bars, but the bars itself are pretty thick aluminum, so it should be okay, I think. Here, just putting on the brakes. That's how the spacer goes, the little cone spacers. So they line up. And, and then here, the same, the same deal on the... On the front, just putting the pads in. Honestly, if I had to do it again, I would put the pads on before putting the brakes on, but this helps you line up to the rim. So yeah, I got these two saddles. I think I'm gonna go with the thicker saddle, but you can see both these saddles kind of have holes in them, the turbo on the sides, and then this one just on this uh, right side, and then a little bit on the, on the other side. But I think the thicker saddle uh, will be a little bit better for this build and then yeah basically what I want to do is patch up the holes so you just spray it, give it a clean um, using Nitsu glue again um, you want your hands to be clean as well and before I do that I'm just gonna uh, even out or smooth out the area so you can see some of this leather is popping up and if I put Nitsu glue over the top it's going to have a little bump, so I just wanted to shave, shave all these off. Um, of course, you know, be careful with the, a razor blade. I don't have to tell you guys. And once that's done, make sure it's all clean, ready to go. And yeah, this product's called Nitsu Glue. I've used it on a few saddles before. This is a, uh, got, <laughs> got one pack left, but it comes in a pack of three. 
and what you do is you just knead it for a few seconds and then it's ready to put on it's kind of just like putty and I find the best way is just to just kind of shove it in and then just wipe it with your fingertips to smooth out the edges and yeah once what you want to do is once it's pretty smooth or as smooth as you can get it just leave it you don't want to touch it too much otherwise it's gonna stick to your fingers and come off um, I've done this a bunch of times and I'm still getting used to it I think I'm getting better every time but yeah still still sometimes you can mess with it too much and it ends up taking taking uh, the whole thing off so you got to like redo it so yeah make sure you take your time and get it as perfect as you can without overdoing it and then you just uh, let it dry for 24 hours and it feels like basically just feels like rubber and it sticks on pretty well to the saddle as well uh, this is a shifter I'm running again uh, I thought it'd be funny to run like a low-end friction shifter on this um, but I just basically give, gave it a clean this is actually a left-hand shifter for the big chain rings but because it's friction I'm just using it on the right hand side for my ready and then here I'm putting a little bit of tube on the handlebars to stop to stop the shifter from scratching it because th this is an old style shifter where it's just like metal on metal and it's not like the best forming fit so as soon as you clamp it down it's going to scratch the metal but I find a little bit of rubber tubing just cut up and put over works pretty well and then yeah you can just uh, tighten it up you don't have to over tighten it just make sure it's nice and secure when you're shifting and yeah with the shift underneath I did this a couple of years ago on my Shogun build and it worked pretty well um, you just got to put it in a good hand position for you to kind of move it um, but yeah that that worked for me and then putting these brake levers on I made sure they're about 130 mil from each side um, just because most grips are that size so doing that for now and then just make sure they're the right angle you can just put your hands on it and look over the top to see if they're, they're similar and yeah I think these Abbott brakes are looking pretty pretty sick with those bars as well here just measuring out cable uh, what you want is to have a pretty smooth or smooth line and not too short I'd say if anything it's better to be a little bit longer than too short and then yeah just cutting up the cables here and then same with the uh, same with the cable up the top here and then sizing it for the front you got to make sure you turn the bars to make sure it has free flow and it's not too tight and sometimes when you cut it you got to kind of clean up the ends you can see some of these are pretty rough but I figured out that cleaning cutting cutting it this way and not this way gives you a cleaner cut for some reason so I always cut now this way <laughs> I don't know if that tip's going to help anyone but it might um, here you can use a spoke to kind of clean out the insides make sure it's nice and open and then the last video I think someone said don't use smooth lube because it's wax space use more like a synthetic lubricant or something that's more oil based so I'm using this to see if it makes a difference um, but yes yeah, that stuff's waterproof as well so it's pretty good here just feeding the cable in um, putting in the rear Mac you want your you just want it tight but not so tight it's pulling on the on the uh, rear derailleur and then just snip it make sure your front shift is on the lowest gear when you put it on and then yeah you can kind of like test it out and yeah he's working pretty good I would say my shifter isn't um, my shifter isn't fully friction it has like little clicks in it like it's kind of like half shift like half index but not really index it has little ratchets that it catches on so it's probably like um, it still works as a friction shifter but it's not 100% friction not like the, um, the gravel bike I did um, but yeah it still works nonetheless and it has a pretty good pretty fun feeling to it so yeah no problem shifting here of course 
Um, here I'm going to adjust the B screw a little bit. So the B screw basically aligns your cog of your derailleur a little closer to the cassette. And what this does, it makes it shift a little bit smoother. So I just gave it a few turns and made it a little bit closer and it's shifting real nice now. All right, so installing the brakes, I got all these noodles, <laughs> brake noodles they're called, um, but you can see there's different angles. And I just wanna show you how to pick the right angle. You can see for this back one, if I put it, it could work, but the metal pipe will stick out a decent bit. So I don't want that. That's 135 degrees, I think. And then this is a small 135 degrees. And it seems like once I put the cable in from there to here, it will um, tuck in pretty nicely. So I'm going to use that shorter one. I can also use a 91, but again, the 91 is going to make it stick out a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you have the choice, use the 135 smaller one. And then here for the front, the cable is going to go down. I think the 91 works best on the front, 9 degree brake noodle. Here's the 135. I just want to show you. Um, it could work, but I think if it bends the inward, it could look a little funky on the cable. So I'm going to use the 90 to give it a little bit more, uh, more, more cable. But yeah, I think that's probably just like real picky. If you don't, yeah, if you don't, if you, if you got only whatever, just use, yeah, just whatever, use whatever you got. And then he's repeating the same process. Uh, cleaning it out, sometimes you need to give it a file and putting a little brake loop using new brake cables here I think the other brake cables end up being too short because I've got the wider bars now um, but yeah you can see this avid brake got a little adjuster basically you can go in or further as furthest out furthest out is going to give you the most leverage so I'm going to um, that's the setting I went with and you can just loop it in like that Here with the brake noodle, this <laughs> sometimes when you get new brake cables, they make the end really stiff to like poke through stuff. But if you're poking through something curved, it becomes a hassle. So you might have to bend it, pre-bend it a little bit for to have it go through. I end up pulling that inner tube out, putting the cable through, and then pushing the whole thing through. Um, just don't forget that little spacer on the end. Here, right there as well but yeah after that that was fine you can just loop it through tighten it up should be good I usually tuck my cables inside the v-brake resting on the v-brake and then I cut it so it doesn't hit the wheel here adjusting the v-brakes there's a little screw on each side and you can just use that to kind of tilt your brakes left and right so I just like to align them in the middle and then yeah you can see it's pretty even now, works pretty well. And then same thing with the back brake. Put cable in, same process. Not too much to it, I don't think, on this one. Um, I think what happened here was the back brake or the back wheel wasn't that true, so I ended up having to true the back wheel um, before I got the brake styled. But um, after doing all that, it's uh, it works pretty well. It's able to align the brakes nice and straight, and then here you can see the brake actually uh, the chain actually reaches the chain stay and leaves little marks. I'm cool with that because it's a raw frame. And on my previous Diamondback, um, I had a kind of really cool patina on it, and I kind of want to remake that. Here you can see uh, after the seat's dry, just give it a sand, 600 wet and dry. Yeah, just soapy water and then give it a nice clean. Also clean up the inside, a little bit WD-40 on the rails as well. Getting pretty close now with the build. And yeah, just putting the seat on. I like to turn the top plate 9 degrees to get the seat on. And that way you don't have to fiddle around with the bolt or whatever. You can also see it's pretty windy that day. Um, but yeah, this seat is a San Marco gel seat. It's actually pretty comfy. Um, but yeah, I'm going to test 
test it out and see how this goes. I think it looks pretty cool. And then here, I decided, probably won't keep these pedals on this bike, but decided to put these pedals on anyway. These are the Rob Warner ones, the uh, Bear Trap ones. I think they look pretty cool looking. I think I'll end up putting this on another bike, but I just gave them a quick clean. I'll probably give them a full service, change out the bearings and everything at a later date. But just want to kind of like get the spike going. And then, yeah, just installing the pedals, putting a little bit of uh, grease in the pedals, filling it tight. Nice and tight, but not overly tight. Got to use the <laughs> internal torque wrench. And then, yeah, just wiping off the extra grease, otherwise, it's going to catch the dirt. All right, so I hopped on the bike and it was too high, so I ended up putting up the, the stem to the highest point. I think this is going to feel a little bit, bit better. And then just putting the grips on with water. These are Primo grips, Primo Super Soft grips. I really like these grips, um, nice and thick. And yeah, pretty pretty comfy. But yeah, I think this is looking, uh, looking pretty awesome. And one last thing, just putting on the cable cap. Uh, yeah, just basically clamp it down and make sure it doesn't come off. And that's the last thing. So here's the final bike. Alright, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, super stoked on the bike. You can see, yeah, when I was riding, I bent it a little bit. I felt it bend and then I was, I was just like, yeah, I'll go home and just finish the job. <laughs> so I'll probably be replacing these bars pretty soon. Um, other than that, the bike rides really sick. The brakes work really well and yeah, the chain actually didn't drop off once. Granted, I didn't do a lot of jumps and stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty sure it'll jump off if you go go ham on it um, But yeah, you can see this you can see the bars a little bit bent here. All right shout out to Ryan and Mikey for your donation uh, Appreciate it. Thank you Miguel for the avid brake levers. They go sick and also anyone who bought stickers to, uh, Well, yeah, all the money goes straight into these bike builds. So I appreciate that. Thank you Thank you Boot Bike for the tools. Um, yeah, if you see any tools that you're interested in you can check them out on their website i'll put it in the description and thank you to anyone who sent me stuff i'm sure i'm forgetting someone <laughs> but yeah thank you appreciate it and lastly thank you to all my supporters thanks for watching i hope you liked it and uh <laughs> yeah i'll catch you in the next one peace